Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where you look at a cool PowerShell module every Monday. This Monday, we're taking a look at PowerShell Protect. PowerShell Protect is a new module from Iron Man Software that allows you to audit and block PowerShell scripts in your Windows environment. So um, to install PowerShell Protect, you can just use uh, the PowerShell Gallery and do Install Module uh, PowerShell Protect. PowerShell Protect's um, in anti-malware scan interface provider, meaning that it actually integrates with Windows, um, the, like Windows security system, and um, PowerShell scripts are run through AS, AMSI uh, before they are executed. Typically this is kind of to highlight suspicious looking scripts and then block them from running. Uh, PowerShell Protect allows you to actually um, configure uh, rules so you can determine what scripts you want to audit or log or block. Um, so um, to install PowerShell Protect, uh, you uh, install the module, and then you need to call Install PowerShell Protect. What that will do is it will actually register the AMSI provider, and then you can start to configure your environment to audit and block uh, PowerShell scripts. So uh, after your, the module has been installed, uh, there will be a uh, configuration file inside the module directory. This is just kind of an example configuration that you can use. Um, this configuration is set up to um, pretty much block invoke web request um, and audit to a log uh, in the temp directory. So um, this config file can uh, be stored inside uh, program data, uh, PowerShell protect, and then you put the config file in there, and then um, pretty much that will configure the PowerShell protect system. Um, you can just make changes to the file and then reload PowerShell and you'll see those take effect. Uh, you can also store this configuration file inside um, the registry uh, as well as in an alternate file path, kind of wherever you want to put it. Um, so if we take a look at this config file, um, you're going to notice a couple um, important aspects of it. Um, first of all, we have uh, a rules section here and each one of these rules um, can have multiple conditions. These conditions look at the various uh, aspects of the script. So uh, you have a bunch of different properties to pick from. So in this case, we're checking commands that are executed inside the script and seeing if they equal uh, this get stuff value. So what's interesting about um, PowerShell Protect is that it actually uses um, it uses the uh, AEST, the abstract syntax tree for the PowerShell script to um, evaluate whether or not uh, those particular things are found within the script. So for example, if I did function get stuff, uh, that's fine because I'm not actually executing get stuff. But if I try to execute get stuff, you'll see that um, the script is now blocked because it's been uh, flagged as suspicious uh, through a policy setting um, and it did not execute the get stuff function. So um, the other side of things um, in terms of the configuration file are actions. So uh, your rule that you set up can have one or more actions that happen when um, you actually execute um, or uh, the rule is actually matched. It'll actually execute multiple uh, actions. So in this case, I have two actions set up. First, I have a file action, which will write to a file. So I just set the setting um, to this temp file here, and then I can specify any format I want for the file here. So you have various um, options in terms of the properties you can use for formatting. I'll show you a list of those in a bit. Um, and then you can kind of just write to that file. Uh, the other action that I'm taking is I am blocking. So uh, you can choose to just audit and not block um, so that it just kind of keeps track of you know potentially suspicious behavior if you just kind of want to like store that uh, filtered information somewhere. Um, that kind of thing. So in addition to the file and blocking actions, you can also send HTTP messages as well as TCP messages. So I'll kind of show you a list of um, the properties. So as you can see here, there's a big list of properties that you can use for PowerShell Protect. You can check to whether or not they're an administrator. Uh, you can check the application that's actually executing it. Because AMSI is um, part of the PowerShell engine, um, it actually will integrate with any PowerShell host. So you can block or, or block things such as pwsh.exe or um, powershell.exe, uh, but also third-party systems that use and host the PowerShell engine will also be um, prevented from running scripts that you don't want them to. 
Um, then you have things like content path, commands, uh, the domain that it's in, uh, whether or not that the current machine is a domain controller. Um, and then you can even do things like look at the uh, entire script contents if you want to look for things inside the script. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of the actions, you have, like I said, file, TCP, and HTTP. Um, and finally, uh, there is a bunch of there are a bunch of properties that you can use um, in terms of formatting strings that are sent to those various places. Um, okay, so let's look at a couple more examples of things that we can do with PowerShell Protect. Um, so uh, I have some examples here. Um, so you saw the command example, but you can also do things like uh, member. So this is the actual .NET member call. Um, if I were to put that in here, save that. Um, so now I'm checking for the member of uh, called alloc h global. So that is actually a like, kind of a low level .NET API that um, what it does is alloc mem alloc allocate memory um, manually, pretty much. Um, and if I, for whatever reason, wanted to uh, prevent that from happening, what I could do is create the XML that I just did, and then now if I put uh, this alloc uh, alloc h global call here. You can see it's calling system runtime interop services marshal, and then I'm calling alloc global, and you can see it was blocked by the administrator. So I'll show you uh, what that looks like in terms of the output here. So if we go to the temp directory, oops, and we look at test, you can see this is the the output I'm getting. So I have the timestamp. I have the pretty much the application name is what they call it. So this includes the language that we're running, um, the process that's running it, and then we have our, our version here. And then we have the rule that's matching. This is um, the actual name of the rule. And then we have the user and domain. So um, you can kind of customize this format however you want. Um, and if, you know, if you're sending it to like HTTP or something like that, you could format it as JSON, that kind of thing. Um, all right, so that's an example of blocking a .NET method. So uh, you can dot, uh, block properties and methods of .NET calls and that kind of thing. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually block um, applications. So it, you saw that application string I just showed in the log includes things like the application like XE uh, name and that kind of thing. Um, so for example, if I wanted to um, block PowerShell.exe, so this would pretty much prevent um, Windows PowerShell from pretty much working. So if you want to stop people from using Windows PowerShell, you could create a rule such as this one. And now when I open uh, Windows PowerShell, you'll notice that I didn't get a prompt. Uh, it doesn't have like the path or anything, and then any commands I execute um, don't do anything. So unfortunately, for some reason, you don't get um, an AMSI information message here, but it is actually just blocking all the PowerShell scripts from running. So you can't run Windows PowerShell, but um, you can run uh, PowerShell itself. So PowerShell 7 works just fine. Um, in addition to that, uh, you can also have conditions that have uh, multiple values. So uh, if all those values within, or the multiple conditions all match, then this rule will match and it will execute the actions associated with this rule. So for example, if I were to add another condition on here, for example, uh, this condition uh, checks the domain that we're currently in. So since I'm in the Iron Man domain, um, it's going to check both of these conditions and you know you could have like a, the same configuration file for two different domains that kind of thing and then just check based on domain whether or not you should block Windows PowerShell so now it's going to check both of these conditions um, and you'll notice that I still can't execute anything in PowerShell um, but uh, PowerShell 7 works just fine so um, yeah so there's a bunch of different like options you have here in terms of what do you want to uh, kind of configure and that kind of thing. Um, like I said, you don't have to block things. You can just audit things. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward uh, little module for uh, configuring um, configuring AMSI providers. So uh, PowerShell Protect has a 30-day trial that you can uh, check out. Um, and uh, then it's just licensed per machine after that. So uh, again, this was Module Monday, and we looked at PowerShell Protect for uh, protecting your PowerShell uh, environment inside Windows. Um, and if you like more Module Mondays, definitely subscribe to uh, my channel.